And so the really cool thing I think about Green Dot doing it in Kentucky specifically is, you know, I kind of consider it a Kentucky Proud program because it was developed at the University of Kentucky and it was tested in Kentucky high schools to prove its effectiveness. So in 2010, there was a partnership between the University of Kentucky, KSAP, and the CDC um, to do a five-year research trial of the Green Dot program in 26 Kentucky high schools. In the early days, we didn't know that Green Dot would work, um, but we chose the model because it was built on the principles that we knew worked. So there was research out there that talked about engagement, about bringing communities to the table and not working in isolation. We knew that um, for education programs to work, it couldn't be what they call a one and done or a spray and pray method of, of educating. It really had to be about building a team, building um, a community around the work where that work was ongoing and not just one time. So Green Dot is kind of a nationwide organization that focuses on spreading awareness about power-based personal violence. We also train people in, in being bystanders and like being a good bystander and in being aware of what the signs are of a, of a red dot who is the person that enacts the, um, the violence. I feel like in my own words, when I describe what Green Dot is, I'm telling people that you are helping to prevent um, and personal based violence. And then you have the opportunity when you learn the techniques for Green Dot to intervene. And it all depends on people's personalities on how you intervene because Green Dot offers uh, different techniques and tools to be able to do that. So it's all about the culture that's built within a school. Uh, when you he see Green Dot come in, um, there's this energy that surrounded, surrounds it in which students are, they feel like they're accomplishing something. They're coming together and they're a team uh, kind of against uh, what they call the red dots, those, those areas in which you see violence or abuse or just this negativity. Uh, Green Dot really uh, brings this positivity and this culture of just hope and uh, community to our school. Oh, I think Green Dot has a tremendous impact and it can have even more of an impact uh, the more that we embrace the concept of Green Dot. In our schools, um, again at OCTC, we uh, bring in New Beginnings to present on Green Dot every semester uh, to all of our new freshmen in our first year experience course. And getting that idea in their minds of what a green dot is and how they can actually have an, have an impact on uh, lowering the, uh, the violence in our communities, that's something that they take with, can take with them for the rest of their lives. I think a lot of times if you're a witness uh, to a red dot incident, to some incident of violence, um, you may be really hesitant to get involved. And you could be thinking to yourself, oh, well, that's none of my business. Or you might want to get involved, but you're not sure how to do it safely, or you're afraid that you'll make the situation worse. So I think the greatest benefit of the Green Dot program is that it gives you tools that empower you to feel confident uh, stepping in as a bystander when you witness a red dot situation. Green Dot has been a transformative experience for me um, and I think for the sexual violence field in general. You know, I was thinking about this this morning as I was driving in. When Green Dot came along, it was a shift from uh, trying to make the victim to do something different to prevent him or herself from being harmed. Putting all the responsibility on that person because we as a field weren't really sure that we could make a difference with 
other behavior outside of that, so we were just trying to protect the victims. The research trial found that there is a 17 to 21 percent reduction in the perpetration of sexual violence because of the implementation of Green Dot in those schools. Um, which is really just phenomenal when you think about it because that is 17 to 21 percent fewer people who are experiencing sexual violence in those really formative years of a 14 to 18 year old in high school. Um, and the, the kind of change that that makes in someone's life, not having that experience because of something that we're doing is just, there aren't words for it of what that means for people. Teens today, they're dealing with so many issues. You know, there's mental health problems are skyrocketing among teens. And a lot of that is related to issues of bullying, cyberbullying, and harassment. So I think teens definitely, it's something that they experience themselves. It's something that they see their friends experience. So they definitely know that it's a problem. And I think Green Dot um, gives them confidence in knowing that they can be a part of the solution. When we have our Green Dot presentation, we don't have time to really debrief in that time period because it's only a short class period. The week after is reported as our faculty members' favorite session because then the students come in actively discussing what they remembered from the week before and how they have then identified opportunities for themselves to be a green dot on campus from the small to the large. And so we've had students who just said, hey, I was a green dot and I held the door open for someone whose books looked really heavy. And we've had students who said, hey, I saw someone who was crying in the parking lot and they had just failed their anatomy test. And so I was able to step in and being an encouraging uh, co-student for them. And so we have seen students engage with what the language is and also apply it to their own lives. We decided to give every student a green dot and ask them, what is their green dot? What, what is the thing that has protected them at times and what is the thing that has made a difference as far as pivotal times in their lives. Having the students understand and having people to understand um, what exactly is going on in their environment, I feel like helps them step up a little bit more. Um, but I think also, you know, people just don't, they don't like to speak up. They, um, you know, feel I guess somewhat like, well, this isn't my business and I shouldn't interrupt. Well, in the learning of Green Dot, I believe that they are able to understand how important it is for them to stand up and to be active bystanders. I have been involved with Green Dot for many years. I started with Green Dot over here when I worked for the Boys and Girls Club. And when you're looking at that program, the bystander piece of it, trying to educate people, trying to educate teenagers and adults on how to help others in need. United Way feels that that is part of our community service piece. We see that that fits into a lot of the programs that we partner with and fund and support, like the Gathering Place. A good example of Green Dot for us right now in Henderson is we just opened last year in August a Boys and Girls Club unit and so these kids have got an opportunity to understand what it means to step in and help people when they're in trouble. Not just stand by and just let whatever's happening happen. You know, know who to call, when to call, um, when to step in, when not to step in. So we see it as a human service and health piece for us in our community. Green Dot makes a difference because as someone who kind of grew up and was always, uh, I'm, very skinny and I'm very different, not different looking, but I've always been really tall and skinny. And so the bullying aspect hits home for me because growing up it was, uh, I got made fun of a lot for different things. And so now that I'm able to relate to uh, high school and middle school students about, you know, this is normal, this is how you can deal with that situation. Um, and it really wasn't until uh, I started understanding what Green Dot was that I was like, oh wow, you know, this is really something that, that can make a difference. And it's already made a difference in my life because I was able to voice that. And, and you know, through social media, you can explain things to people. And uh, it really has, has helped me so I can help other people. Hoping for a sincere performance, but open to finding the moment, to finding out where I'm headed now. Looking for a sign of disaster
so I can make it there faster. I'm weighing the consequences out. What we had been doing as rape crisis centers was working with high schools. And so we knew we had an in with those schools. They would invite us in already. So we talked to them about the possibility of working with them, providing the Green Dot curricula with them, and seeing if they would be willing to participate in the research as a Green Dot school so that everybody in the school um, who was considered to be a leader would be trained in the Green Dot curricula. These were the kids who were leaders. Kids that the other kids thought were leaders, peer leaders. And those kids would be the ones that would learn the curricula, learn the ways to intervene, recognize what sexual assault looked like before it happened, and stop it before it happened. And then the other kids would see them do that and copy that behavior because it was becoming an appropriate behavior and the other behavior was inappropriate. So we assumed that the Green Dot program, based on that research, could possibly be effective. And they started doing uh, data collection about the rate of sexual violence happening at the school. And it, they had already had research being done that it was a very high rate and it started to, get, to decline. And so that gave us some hope because we had never seen numbers decline before, ever. Reactive green dots are green dots who either respond to a power-based personal violence situation right in the moment, or they help the victims after um, the violence has already taken place and help them to receive the help that they need. So a reactive green dot is gonna be a situation and when something is gonna become violent or aggressive and you can either use different techniques that green dot um, teaches, which is direct, delegate, or distract. And depending on an individual's personality, they can choose which way to intervene. Our students that are reactive, uh, they've talked about it with me and how to be reactive. Uh, when you see something, you do something. Uh, don't just be a bystander that's going to be quiet. You actually, uh, when you see something happen, you're reactive to it. Uh, and I, they're always talking about the three D's. Uh, so they can direct someone uh, to kind of get them away from that red dot moment, kind of to make it a green dot moment. Uh, they can delegate someone if they can't speak, if they're shy or afraid, they can delegate someone to step in, um, or they can uh, distract someone. If they see something happening, simply distract them from the, the violence, from the, the moment, that, that red dot to turn it into a green dot. So um, that's that reactive uh, green dot. I think it's important because it really dives into the fact that we're not all the same and we're all gonna uh, treat a situation differently than one another. The initial number started out looking like it was 50%. And the more that we tested the variables, the research finally settled on it was 17 to 21% that we had reduced sexual violence, but not only rape, which was the initial perpetration of rape is what we were trying to prevent. But we also prevented domestic violence, dating violence, sexual harassment, and bullying, which we had put some questions in there about that, hoping against hope that we might do some good there too. And sure enough, we did.
child abuse, domestic violence, those kind of situations, statistically is very high in the state of Kentucky, one of the highest in the nation. Um, whenever you have a program like Green Dot that's implemented in the community, then you really have the opportunity to change that statistic because you have more people who can become involved before a domestic violence or a child abuse or elder abuse or any of those situations could occur. So having this program in our community can hopefully, and I think in time, it will uh, lower those statistics and hopefully take Kentucky off of that top of the list. I believe Green Dot should be a way of life for everyone, just as the golden rule will do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. But Green Dot extends that, to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you and everyone you love, because you wouldn't want someone to harm um, your family member or your friend or your spouse. It's uncomfortable sometimes for people to kind of step up and say, that's not right, that's not cool, you know, I need to, to help this person. Um, and I think that Green Dot just really gives kids the tools to be able to more comfortably do that. Um, you know, it's a lot easier sometimes just to walk on by and keep your head down than to, than to jump in because when you jump in, then you risk, you know, you run the risk of, you know, something happening to you or someone, you know, giving you backlash as a result of jumping in as a bystander. And I think that, you know, people just need to know that, that that's what we should be doing for each other, you know, being respectful and helpful of each other. A bystander is someone who sees something going on and normally it will kind of cause a gut reaction where you're like, oop, I'm not sure that what's going on is a good thing. I'm not sure uh, that this feels right. And so the bystander can either choose to do nothing, that is a choice, or they can choose to get involved. And when they get involved, that person becomes an active bystander. And so that's a really important part of Green Dot is teaching people how to be effective, active bystanders when they see something that makes their gut go, mm, I don't think what's going on here is quite right. Um, so we give students and community members the tools that they need to be able to be effective bystanders and safely um, and effectively intervene in potentially high risk or potentially violent situations. So everyone has a, has, has a skill set, everyone has a strength that they can utilize, that they can put a green dot into play. So the three things that a bystander can do in this, in like a violent situation is they can either be very direct, so that is just approaching the situation, making it very known to the red dot what is taking place, making sure the victim is okay, and getting the victim out of the situation. Um, there's also distract, so you can either approach the red dot and distract them and kind of draw their attention to somewhere else, or if there's a big group of people, you can draw the group the group of people's direction to something else. Or you can also delegate, which is where you kind of hand the situation over to somebody else, like law enforcement. One of the number one things you could do is uh, you, can, you can delegate the situation, which means you can go, you know, you don't have to get directly involved. You can go tell a teacher, and you don't gotta be a snitch, you know? It's not like you're being a snitch. You're, you can write a little note and put it on a teacher's desk and be like, hey, um, so-and-so has been getting made fun of by the lockers and uh, I, I wanted to just let you know that and or he's been picked on verbally outside the bus stop, um, things like that. A red dot behavior is any act of violence. It could be stalking, it could be uh, partner violence, it could be child abuse, physical assault. Um, any act of violence would be a red dot behavior and it's kind of like um, looking at a map and seeing where uh, the disease is most common, the red dot kind of illustrates those acts of, of, of violence. So what we're hoping to do with green dot is to uh, replace those red dots with, with green dots. I've been in red dot situations in the past and no one helped me. And so I just want people to feel like they're not alone and that there's like a group out there that can help. 
I mean, if they, if you think about it from your perspective, like or from the person who's involved, if you think about it from their perspective, then it'll make you want to involve more because like, imagine if that was you in that situation when you want someone to help you. And so the thing that I think is really powerful about Green Dot is it is something that everyone can get behind. It's something that anyone can do. You can do a green dot no matter who you are. Um, and I think what's really great about it is because it is so accessible for people, it is going to spread and we have seen it spread in our schools and our communities um, so that people are safe and so that fewer people are experiencing violence. Um, and just kind of thinking about the world that we can create if truly people are um, looking out for one another and believing that violence is not okay, just the difference that that will make in people's lives of fewer people experiencing harm, people knowing that their neighbors and friends are looking out for them. Um, you just can't really put words on it of like what that means and how that's going to change the way that people experience their lives so that they can thrive and flourish without um, having these traumatic experiences that unfortunately are all too common. At the start of the year, here comes your white night. Got a foot on the edge, looking over the ledge And everything will be just fine Turning inside out, falling out of time If it's the final story, it's death and glory And tomorrow the sun will rise and we'll start over I worked with so many kids whose lives were impacted and changed forever that I knew that if we could do something just a little bit ahead of the violence that they did experience, if we were able to change the world around that child, that kid could probably, probably be safe. What started happening at the school was it started looking like a Green Dot School. So there would be all the kids would be wearing t-shirts that were Green Dot t-shirts that they designed. They would have some kind of ball game where Green Dot would be, it would be obvious that the school was a Green Dot school. There would be posters in the hallway, there would be banners. There would, it started looking like a Green Dot school. To us, that was indicative that the culture was changing. We also, as people who presented Green Dot and as people who went in to collect data, for the research, we would hear the kids talking amongst themselves in the hallway that indicated to us that the culture was changing because the kids would yell down the hallway, that's a red dot, I heard that. <laughs> and, you know, we were like, everyone in the school knows what a red dot is. And that became part of their lexicon, green dot, red dot. And it was, it was just, we would just love it. We would go in there and just look at this. It's fabulous. It's the most hopeful thing we've ever done. I mean, obviously we know from the research that there are fewer instances of sexual violence because of Green Dot when we implement it in schools, which is awesome. Um, but also just kind of anecdotally, you can feel the culture of the school start to change. When you see students out in the hallway doing Green Dots and saying like, hey, do a green dot. Don't be picking on that kid or don't be trying to don't be trying to fight each other. Let's do green dots here. Like that's awesome because you can see how the culture is changing to where students are willing to intervene and students are saying that this is a school culture where everyone is entitled to safety and everyone in this community is going to look out for one another. And so it creates um, an environment in our schools where students feel safe 
where they're able to come to school to learn and to hang out with their friends and do all the things that young people are supposed to do without having this underlying potential threat of bullying or dating violence or sexual assault or harassment that we know happens to young people. And I think Green Dot gives us the, the hope that we can make a difference. Um, will we prevent every red dot? Probably not, but we certainly know that our green dots can outnumber the red dots. Um, and, and in that there's hope. Um, and, you know, sometimes the world can be really dark. Um, and I, I think Green Dot gives us the hope that that the world is a good place and there are good people in it um, and that we can help raise good people um, and, and continue that. Um, so Green Dot, Green Dot can't stop. Um, that effort has to always continue. My career path has been one from working at the individual level to working here at KSEP to see how the network works to now working in the government where we fund these agencies. And that is what my green dot is today. I am going to protect and, and make sure that this, this approach is maintained and that they get the funding that they need and support that they need to do the work that's gonna change this world. It's really important that we continue doing this work with Green Dot and sexual violence prevention um, because no one deserves to experience this type of violence in their lives. Um, and so if we can do something to stop violence before it happens and to keep people from being hurt, um, we need to do that because it has such a profound impact on people in their lives um, that if we can do something to stop it, which we know we can because we know Green Dot is effective, then we have an obligation, I think, as community members and as people who care about our friends and family um, and our neighbors to do something to keep those folks from experiencing violence. If you get the chance to be part of Green Dot, you should definitely do it because really my confidence was here and now it's like here. Like it went crazy up because um, I just feel a lot more included now. And I feel like I've got friends. I've got a lot more friends now through the Empower Youth Conference that I made. And so I just don't ever feel, I, I, I used to feel alone a lot, even though I had friends, but now I don't feel as alone.
Morning. 